whoever's running the recording. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the um, our speaker for today is Bob Ekman, and uh, Bob is the president of the board of trustees for the Rockville Science Center, which is developing a permanent science center in Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, the center runs several programs that bring science into local communities, including a maker space, science cafes, summer camps, trips to local science venues, and exhibits at festivals and schools, science fairs, lots of things. For the past 30 years, the Rockville Science Center has conducted an annual Rockville Science Day at Montgomery College with exhibits in science and technology for the whole family. Uh, the center now has a storefront right in downtown Rockville, right off Maryland Avenue, Whoop. where it runs classes, engineering, team sessions, and online activities. Bob retired from a 44-year career in software development and teaching at IBM and Lockheed Martin. He worked on government contracts from space projects, the Apollo project, in the 1960s to, do, to defense research projects at DARPA in the 90s. He developed commercial software for IBM and human resources software for Lockheed Martin, and he taught internal classes in software engineering, programming, and web development. Bob is deeply committed to developing the next generation of engineers. He has led the Engineering Exploring Program in Rockville for over 20 years. This program uses hands-on learning activities in robotics, rocketry, and drones to give high school students experience in engineering and inspire them into engineering careers. He's mentored over 500 teenagers through this program, and he's still working day to day up at the Rockville Science Center uh, to educate more kids of all ages. So, Bob, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you for coming. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yes. 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 Oh, good. Good. Yes. Uh, uh, Welcome to everybody. Uh, thanks for inviting me in. And I just want to give you a little bit of uh, information about the Rockville Science Center um, and what we're doing today and some of the issues we have uh, facing us. Um, our mission is uh, to provide science and engineering engagement opportunities for people of all ages, uh, kids, adults, teens. We are an informal education corporation. We're a 501c3. And we have a 30 year history of engaging thousands um, since our first meeting in 19, uh, 1989. It's hard to believe 30 years have gone by that fast, but we, are incorporate, we were uh, incorporated in 2009. We're a place where people can gather for firsthand learning of science, engineering, and technology. Uh, we have a lot of programs. We have a lot of wheels all turning at once. We uh, run the Science Cafe and several presentations online now. Uh, we've uh, held trips with um, uh, people going to local areas uh, to see science and engineering. Um, we support teenage uh, uh, engineering teams. We run Science Day, which was mentioned. We are also involved in other festivals. We have school exhibits. We have a makerspace. And like we uh, said, we now have a storefront in downtown Rockville. Our programs are driven by participant by the participants, uh, what they want to do and, and um, the, our, our big challenge is to find someone to take on the, the responsibility to make those programs happen. Um, uh, we do have a, a lot of science, special science programs, and I do invite all of you to help make it happen. Um, there's always opportunities for volunteers. We've been successful for many years because we use volunteers and other organizations facilities such as schools and community centers and the library. Almost all our programs started out as free or cost recovery fees. And uh, we, we uh, initially or have been for many years a, a science center without walls. In uh, 2017, we started to make a serious drive for facilities of our own. Uh, we worked with the city of Rockville, the county and uh, a property owner and developer to try and build and operate a, a science center in downtown Rockville. Um, unfortunately, that proved to be a little beyond our uh, reach financially and operationally. It's, um, I think anybody that's tried to start up a, a big uh, corporation in Montgomery County is, understands the challenges. Um, 
We then started looking for smaller facilities where we could get some experience at uh, charging for programs and running a facility. Uh, last September, we signed an agreement with Federal Realty Investment Trust to use a storefront in, on Maryland Avenue in downtown Rockville, right off the square, right across from the library. We opened in January, had a really good February, and then we closed in March. <laughs> a, short, a rather short life. It's unfortunate, but that's um, what we had to do. Um, our driving motivation, let me talk a little bit about my involvement and some of the issues that uh, I, I see. Um, our driving motivation is to give people uh, opportunities to enjoy and explore science and engineering. Um, I attend, and in many cases lead, many, some of these opportunities. And I tell you, it's extremely satisfying to sit back and watch the kids or the adults engaged in building a robot or arguing about dark matter as we just had in a presentation, our online presentation a couple of days ago, um, or collecting rocks from a stream in a camp. Um, when you go out to a rocket launch and you see the kids running around uh, prepping their rockets and they fire them off and they run around and find the rocket in the tree and then try to get the rocket out of the tree, it is extremely satisfying. I just, I have more fun watching than I do doing. It is uh, so much fun. And that Science Day is another one. You, you just see the people engaged in science and walking from one set to another. Families um, showing kids different things. And um, it's uh, very satisfying. I got to tell you, that's why I do it. It's, I get up in the morning. I just can't wait to see another activity. The fact that we've lost so many of our in-person activities is kind of disheartening to me. So let me just talk about two issues that I see, and I will take some questions after this. I uh, won't make this real long, but um, because of the lockdown, um, I am uh, concerned that uh, people are losing interest in being physically engaged. Um, I see it with my teens, I see it with adults. Um, they're losing interest in what I call the real world. Uh, we told our kids to sit on the couch and watch their screens, and uh, with a, a major lack of hands-on activity and a lack of uh, any external schedule. I, I talk to my kids and I ask uh, my teens and I say, well, what do you do all day? Well, they, they sleep until 11 o'clock. They get us around noon. And now they, they do go to classes online, but as soon as that's off, they turn on the video games and they play video games to midnight and then they go to bed. That's their day. It's kind of weary in my mind, but, uh, um, it's as if we told our kids to learn to play basketball without ever giving them, uh, without them ever picking up a ball or even playing a game. I just don't, I don't get it, but uh, that's what we're doing. We're losing the uh, value of socialization and teamwork. Um, if you've been involved in science and engineering, you know that science and engineering is a team effort. You don't go to the moon by yourself. You don't create a vaccine by yourself. Um, teamwork and social interactions and debate are the secret sauce of science and engineering. And without them, um, I'm afraid we're losing an awful lot in this, in this lockdown. But that's, that's, that's one uh, observed situation. But the, the one that really bothers me is our, is our concern for the Science Center itself. Um, we are always just a month or two from extinction. Um, we survive at the pleasures of others. Federal Realty would like to make more money from their storefront property. Um, they've allowed us to use the space for a relatively small amount of $1,500 a month. Um, so, the, and the city is con, not only con, is considering cutting some of our grants, as many other grant organizations that I deal with have, have uh, informed me they're not going to do the same grants that, that they've done in the past. Um, the city already cut us $5,000 for 2020, and they're uh, hemming and hawing about 2021, which we are already one quarter done with 2021. Uh, so um, I'm a little concerned about all that. So we need funding. We have to have a certain amount of funding, otherwise we just can't stay in business. But um, more importantly, we need committed individuals to make our mission and, and to make our science center real. And so it really comes down to the um, uh, involvement of individuals. Um, Paul has helped a lot, and uh, we have two uh, hired uh, part-time employees that help us make it 
but um, our real struggle is to find people that are willing to spend the extra time that it takes to bring these uh, programs to life. So I will stop at this time if that's okay, unless people, I can go on for many hours if you want to talk about programs, but I do want to give you, you uh, a chance to ask some questions and uh, find out what you think or what you would like to know about the Science Center. So you, if you have questions, go ahead and unmute yourself. I had a question. Is there, uh, is there any plan to reopen the, uh, the physical, uh, the center itself or have uh, socially distant programs? Yes, uh, yes, there is. We, are, we have already started a couple of programs. Um, we have a protocol that we're following. Uh, the, the storefront is a pretty big facility. It's 15, uh, three, it's 3,500, I'll get it right. It's 3,500 square feet. Uh, 15 foot ceilings. So it's a big space. You really feel like you're outdoors. We actually considered doing drone competitions inside the storefront. Um, we were told by the fire marshal not a good idea because the drones might hit the uh, sprinkler system, and uh, you wouldn't. It wouldn't be a good day. <laughs> so um, you'd get wet. <laughs> yeah, you'd get wet. You'd have wet drones. <laughs> um, and uh, we've now filled up the space also with too much stuff. Um, but we are hey, on the, on, on the drone protocol. thing. Can you can you actually fly a drone in, in Rockville? I thought that was inside the zone of. Uh, we can fly a drone inside. Yes. You can't go outside with it, right? Yes. Well, no, we do. We go over to um, Redgate. We're sort of on the edge of the, of the, of the restricted zone. Or the, um, yeah. So we, uh, you know, we have the the, the, the person uh, Tom May. Some of you may know him. Tom is a, a certified drone engineer and flyer he, he uses that for does it for business and he's our mentor for the drone program um yeah. but he does he we do go over to redgate golf course which used to be a golf course we now call it our drone testing arena um but with that we are bringing in uh, small groups of kids about uh, eight to ten at a time they wear masks wash their hands um not only kids but uh, uh we are running some classes we can sit uh, eight kids around a, a big, broad uh, a classroom area, and uh, it works pretty well. So I, I'm pretty confident. We also have a lot of uh, the doors where you can open the doors in the back and the front. We get air blowing through there. We have a filtration, air filtration thing. Um, I, we did a lot of work on the uh, HVAC, uh, trying to clean the HVAC. We put in new filters for the HVAC uh, system. So. Um, I and you also pretty you're, you're, you're making the masks there too, right? With the uh, we were, yeah, we made masks and yeah, Paul and, gave the demo on that. Yeah, and, and it worked fine. Um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think our, we're following the protocols that that, that we under, as we understand them. And uh, so what Bob we did, did so, some of our programs, what we did is stretch them out. So, like, I had this uh, high school engineering group, and we would all meet on Wednesday nights. But what we decided to do is stretch it out where we have four teams of about 10 kids each and um, they come in for two hours and then, then a couple hours later, the next team comes in and a couple hours later, the next team comes in. So we're able to get all four teams in once a week in, in person. And then a lot of their work they do online themselves. The team gets together and does online designing and uh, engineering activities. Um, we have two robotics teams, one rocketry team, and one drone team. Bob, this is Bob Sonawane. My question to you is, do you get funding from National Science Foundation? Because I see a lot of times for the STEM program, the National Science Foundation has a lot of programs, and they do a lot of funding, millions of dollars, actually. Well, we would certainly like to have millions of dollars. <laughs> There's no question about that. But uh, no, we don't get from the National Science Foundation. We do get most of our funding comes from the city of Rockville. Oh, I see. But not, you have not looked at the national level, like National Science Foundation. Uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've looked at a lot of grant opportunities. Um, and over the years, a, a lot of them have uh, details that maybe we can't quite meet. And so uh, I've noticed that uh, uh, the answer so what, to your question is no, we have not gone to the National Science Foundation. Uh, okay. What's the total funding that you get every year? And Our budget is 100000 a year. 
uh, we need to we spend a hundred thousand a year. Um, we get sixty thousand from the city of Rockville. We get another um, maybe twenty thousand from um, from other grants. We get about twenty thousand from fees. Now th that was our formula for 2019. For 2020, our formula was very much different because uh, we were looking uh, at uh, creating income to cover the cost of the storefront. Up until the storefront, all our spaces were free. We got free spaces. We didn't. And spend the money. reason I'm saying I work for a federal government uh, like EPA, and several uh, offices within the federal government have educational funding, and I don't know that they how you how they characterize the educational funding practically every federal agency has some kind of educational funding so and those are if you are like 501c3 it's a lot easier to get funding compared to the private organization so i would suggest that you should look into the federal funding from different departments specifically for high school education and college education you know same funding we have uh, uh, from time to time we have different people working on on our funding different people working on our website um, as I mentioned before one of our problems is having an, enough time and enough people's time to follow all the paths that we need to follow and uh, um, but uh, thank you for uh, the idea there I had a question. Uh, are you familiar with the Raspberry Pi? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> so I have one right here. Okay. I'm trying to set up a, an Osprey cam in my, uh, in my backyard here with, to overlook an Osprey nest. So maybe I'll join you sometime and we can figure this out. Sure. Our, our uh, lead for uh, that is uh, Abdel, who uh, is our part-time um, scheduler for activities in, the, in, the maker, in our maker space, which is closed. And <laughs> one of the problems we've had this year, and more recently, is so we had, we had facilities all around the city of Rockville. They're all closed. <laughs> They're go going away. Johns Hopkins is disappearing. Um, I, we had an office over Johns Hopkins, and it's empty. They're, they're, all the uh, research groups have left, and um, it's kind of spooky. And then I look at Montgomery College, and there's like one car in the parking lot, and uh, yeah. it's kind of scary. It's kind of it's uh, uh, universities in Shady Grove again. <laughs> there's no lack of parking space. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody there. It's empty. The schools are empty. And these are places where we did programs. We did our robotics tournaments at the University of Shady Grove, Science Day at uh, Montgomery College, Johns Hopkins. We had meetings and other activities. All gone. It's all gone. In the library, I was in the library yesterday trying to figure out, we were taking stuff out. So what we did is we took a lot of stuff out of the library, moved it over our, to our storefront in order to continue running some of our programs. Um, we have raspberry pies over there. If you, uh, if you send me a note or send a note to info at rockvillesciencecenter.org, um, huh? I can connect you up with uh, Abdo, and he's, we've got raspberry pies over at our storefront. If anybody doesn't realize, it's a little, it's a little computer. I think it's $30 or something, and it does yeah. amazing things. We also use Arduinos, and then we have lots of other uh, 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 microprocessors that we use for different things. Um, we're, tr we're trying to build a, a flight controller for our rockets using some small microcontrollers. So that's kind of stuff that we do. I, I have a question. Uh, may I, so my question is, you know, education is extremely important too, but what kind of skills children will receive? You know, you said uh, people, you know, children stay all day and play computer games. The skills to use a remote control, uh, you know, what else they can do by hands? You know, it's important to have a skills to create something, you know. For my uh, grandchildren, I bought some, you know, bucket of clay put them you know to do something you know to create something to use your fingers you know little baby when they grow up if you you know <laughs> give him more activity he started talking faster 
So it's very depends, you know, some brain with the activities. And uh, maybe I lost something from your presentation. Uh, did you give them knowledge just to do something physically, you know? <laughs> Sorry if it's wrong question. Well, I do agree with you. The hands-on activities are, I think, more than just important. I think they're, that's what makes life interesting. Um, at least from my perspective, I like to build things and make things. And you ask about kids. So um, we've had a number of programs that are, are suited for um, older elementary or elementary and uh, middle school kids. Actually, our focus, when we look at, um, uh, while we have stuff for uh, high school teens, we do really focus our camps on middle school students. Of course, this summer we didn't do any camps, but um, uh, which has a financial impact on us because we used to, we made, usually made money from our camps. But back to activities for your kids, we do have, or grandkids, um, we've, uh, we run a number of programs out of the storefront. Um, one coming up is we're gonna um, make uh, small rockets and fly them um, using a, a local uh, rocket club up in, uh, up in uh, uh, Frederick near, uh, near Mount Airy. Um, so we're gonna, to, to do the, for the program, the, what you have to do is you sign up using uh, Eventbrite or uh, Meetup and um, go look for Rockville Science Center in Eventbrite and uh, you sign up for it. Um, we uh, will give you a kit, a small kit to make a rocket. We did this for making motors or using Arduinos for making little robots. So you sign up, you get a kit. Um, it does cost. We charge you the price of the kit plus a little bit because um, we have to pay the people that do the class. Um, so you sign up for the, the program. Uh, we, it's usually limited to like 10 or 15. Um, you come by the storefront, pick up your kit. You pick up your kit, go home. Then we run a couple of Zoom sessions in order to teach you how to build or whatever um, the, the program is. And then at the uh, uh, end of that, uh, for, for example, the, the rocket club will um, allow you to fly your rockets. Um, they, small motors, they only go up a couple hundred feet, maybe four or five hundred feet. So they're not real big rockets, but still it gives the kids a, an opportunity to, to build a rocket and then see it go up and the uh, parachute come out and it floats back down. Very exciting, especially for a 10 year old. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to try that. Yeah. It, it, um, right now, our website is ailing a little bit, but um, if you go on Eventbrite or Meetup, uh, we post most, almost all our, our classes on Eventbrite and Meetup. And um, uh, if you have a teenager that would like to join one of these clubs, um, a high schooler, um, we are having an open house. We've had an open, we'll, we'll have an open house on Monday. They can sign up again on Eventbrite and uh, uh, meetup. I, I think it may not be in meetup, but in any case, if, you, if any questions at all, if you send them to info at rockvillesciencecenter.org, we'll funnel it to the right person and give you the answer that you uh, hopefully will, will answer your questions. Excellent. Where are you? Any. Volunteers now. I had a question and I may have missed it and I apologize. I had to step away for a moment. The uh, cafes were um, well attended and very enjoyable arrangements. Uh, are there any Zoom cafe types of things these days and uh, are they scheduled on a regular basis or how is that handled at this point? Now that the uh, barbecue place has gone out of business, we uh, are struggling to find a new venue even after we come back from COVID. Well, you, you, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, yeah, we we are doing very well with our online Zoom uh, cafes. Uh, you have to provide your own food. We we don't bring food to your house, but uh, so um, no, our online sessions are really good. We had one on dark matter just this Tuesday. The one you were talking I was, about. Yeah. Pardon. The the argument or the discussion you were just talking about dark matter. Yeah. Yes, we had it online. We had 72 people online. Um, uh, rather, I mean, that's 
pretty close to our largest cafe we've ever had. We had one cafe years ago. We had a couple cafes over at the, the barbecue place where we almost hit 100. But um, we we're hitting 50, 60, 70 people. What's interesting is where these people come from. They come from all over the United States. We have a lot from Montgomery County, but we have people from California. We have people coming in from the UK. Um, I'm going, oh, okay. Uh, maybe we need to uh, extend our uh, fundraising a little further outside of Montgomery County. <laughs> so that so, was on the 15th. Are they now being held regularly on the third Tuesday or? Well, actually, I so, yeah, good, good question, good, good question. Uh, um, Howard Lickman is our and we so we have one on the second Tuesday at one o'clock, one p.m. in the afternoon. That was our our Science Tuesday uh, activity that we used to have over at the senior center. We used to run Science Tuesday over well. Not that long ago, but we used to, we ran uh, Science Tuesday over at the Senior Center. So we have, we have programs for seniors. I, I want to go back on this too, um, to talk about who comes to our programs. We do have programs for kids and teenagers, but over half the people that use our, our uh, are involved in our programs are, are adults. And we do have seniors over at the Senior Center that come in. Uh, maybe some of you online here think you're a senior. <laughs> so, but, so you're invited, even if you're not a senior. Um, so we do that on the second Tuesday of every month at one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, then our regular science cafe is at seven o'clock on the third Tuesday of every month. And then from time to time, we will have additional presentations. But they are going very well. I, so well that probably even if we ever come out of this uh, um, lockdown malaise that we're in right now, um, we probably will continue to do a certain number of them online or maybe all of them online. Mm -hmm. um, they, they've also asked to be recorded and uh, we've sort of shied away from that because of all the legal issues of getting people to, to um, They've asked to have them recorded and then post them on our site. Um, I've shied away from that. It's it's a little extra work, and uh, and then there's a lot of legal issues and other things that I just don't want to travel in. Thank but we do, do invite you all to come to the to the cafes. It's it's quite uh, they're quite in, uh, quite good. I I think some of the topics I go back and think about the cafes. Now we've been doing the cafes for mm, 11, 12 years now almost every the third tuesday of every month and um what ex, what uh, excites me about the cafes is not only the topic but the people when you hear these people talking about things um that are uh, so uh, they're so involved with them and they're just um they're just so committed to their topic we've had people that have been studying a certain a certain microbe for 20 years that one microbe and we had one guy that went out to Wake Island, look at Goonie Birds. He spent a year on Wake Island by himself with Goonie Birds. I'm going, what, what gets a person up to do that? I mean, the excitement in it, and when you listen to them talk, and the one that was talking about whale snot, there's a scientist that goes off looking for whale snot. It's just crazy things. And these people are so dedicated to it. And you realize how uh, much energy it takes to bring science to life, and um, uh, it, it's very, it's very encouraging. Well, Bob, I think young uh, people. I was uh, going to say, you know, I have a, two grandchildren um, in sixth and seventh grade now, and I've been putting together short videos on science topics for them, uh, and I have several more that I want to do. Uh, they're about ten minutes long. And uh, they just give me a chance to connect with them. They're, they live up in Ellicott City, so they're a little far away, but uh, we can put these online and I send them a little homework assignment and some words to look up and things like that. Uh, and so we've done some things on bacteria and cells and chemistry and so forth. So we're continuing, hopefully we'll continue to do that. And they're, I'm making them for, for them 
but they're kind of generic. I don't name names. And so I'm hoping that I can uh, use those recordings to, you know, put together some kind of a, a an online uh, program. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to send those to Abdel and see if we can use them in the future. <clears throat> It's a good idea. I mean, I really, I, I, I congratulate you for getting involved in your grandkids' lives. I, I have six grandchildren and um, I've done some of the same things with my grandchildren. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, very One of the idea. richest aspects of the uh, cafes was the fact that it was such a blend of people who had spent a career and had some real expertise that oftentimes uh, matched that of the uh, speaker so that there was a dialogue at that level. But there was also uh, a cadre of uh, younger people and even some uh, teenagers at those things that were sponges for the information that was coming out from a variety of sources. They were most enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, I'd it. get back online. Well, it's, it's intergenerational. Um, yeah, and you're right. Some of the teens actually were assigned to come to our cafes. That was that would be their homework assignment, and then they would have to report it in their class. And uh, that that was um, I thought it's good. It was a good connection. Uh, uh, the cafes always had a cross section of of individuals, of people with different levels of skills and knowledge. But like I said, what really comes through is the commitment that people have to these. To these topics and these careers, and if the young people see those people with a career in in uh, biology or astronomy or whatever um, engineering careers, um, gives them a good uh, view of the future for them. Well, thank you, Rob. We appreciate um, you coming and speaking to us. Um, it was very informative. Um, and um, again, if uh, anybody has any further questions for Rob, feel free to, to shoot the email. Um, sure. Send him an email. Be great. Thank yeah, well, you. thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to your group. And uh, um, best of luck to uh, them. I'm also on Alignable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a lot of stuff. Um, it's, it, you know. I, I don't know how much email you get, but I get about two to three hundred emails a day. So I just throw them. Sounds about right. <laughs> about, yeah. yeah. Not from Alignable. <laughs> I only get a hand, handful of them. But.